Welcome to my channel. People act strangely as a result of fear. Additionally, it raises their likelihood of developing unhealthy attachment styles. If you fear losing a relationship, you will do whatever it takes to preserve it. Even if it will harm both of you. If you fear being betrayed by a friend, you may decide to disengage. You may be unwilling to form new relationships and find it difficult to trust strangers. The majority of the time, trauma reactions are less noticeable. Fear tends to present itself in more subtle ways. Try adopting these habits help you overcome the fear of losing someone. Habit number one. Making yourself happy is a skill that you can learn. People are terrified of losing someone they care about since they don't know what to do without them. When people begin to love someone, they make a special place in their lives for that person. That's natural, and it can even be beneficial. However, there is a narrow line between accommodating someone and being dependent on that person. People depend on other people for happiness so much that their happiness becomes inextricably linked to the presence of certain people. You can let other people make you happy, but you also need to learn how to make yourself happy. No matter how mentally ready you are, getting over a loss is hard. What feelings do to a person? Every love comes with some kind of pain. But people can move on from their grief. Pain gets less over time. Fear, on the other hand, remains. Not only that, but fear causes you to suffer even before you lose someone. Many people are afraid of losing someone because they don't know how to be fulfilled on their own. You can prevent this overwhelming fear by learning to love and make yourself happy. That way, you can learn to be self-sufficient while yet maintaining ties. Spend more time alone doing things you enjoy. Spend some time relaxing and meditating. You can learn to love yourself on your own by taking care of yourself on a regular basis. You'll realize that even when you're by alone, you can be happy. Instead of being afraid of being alone, you might learn to love it. That doesn't mean you'll want for isolation you'll continue to look for social engagement. But now that you know you will recover, the loss won't worry you as much. You won't be terrified before losing a loved one, even though it will still be dreadful. Let me share habit number two. Concentrate on what is within your control. People who are afraid of losing feel compelled to exert control over their surroundings. Many people become control freaks in their desperate attempt to prevent the tragedy from occurring. They engage in toxic habits that harm them and those around them. People who have family members with terminal illnesses, for example, will make decisions without consulting the sick. They will frequently force the sick person to try a variety of experimental drugs and treatments. It doesn't matter if a sick person would rather be at home with their family and friends because hospitals are where they need to be. As you can see, the family's intentions are clearly good. However, the person they are trying to help is the one who suffers as a result. All because they're afraid and don't know what to do. If you're trying to hold on to someone no matter what the cost, you can do a lot of damage to them, as this extreme example illustrates. However, dominating behaviors can also imply isolating someone so that they rely on you, guaranteeing that they do not leave. Fear can even cause you to isolate yourself so that you don't have anyone to lose. If you wish to overcome this anxiety and stop engaging in poisonous habits, you must concentrate on managing only what you can. Don't try to prevent the unavoidable, instead, let the future unfold as it should. You can focus on what you can do without going outside the lines. You can start to figure out how to fix the problems in your relationships. Stop hurting or pushing people away, 
and start being a better person. But don't try to make them change. Focus on making a plan for the future that doesn't depend on them, so you'll always have a safety net. If you work on yourself, everything else will work out. The last habit, which is number three. Get to the bottom of your fears. Not all fear is irrational. Sometimes it's a response to something someone else did or the circumstances you're in. It's only normal to worry that you might lose someone when you find they are ill. It's normal to assume your partner wants to leave when they display cold and distant behavior. In any case, talking to others about your worries can be helpful. Additionally, open communication might be the answer if the loss can be prevented. There isn't much you can do to prevent a loss if the loss is likely to occur owing to health issues. Although you can show your support, neither you nor them have any control over whether the loss occurs. But talking to them about your worries can help you feel better. Inform your loved ones of your worries if you don't think you're capable of handling it. By talking to others, you can relieve some of your worries while also receiving consolation. Other forms of losses, such as a breakup, are something that you or they can avoid. In such circumstances, discussing your feelings with them can assist you in resolving the difficulties that divide you. You can also chat to someone else if you don't think talking will help you. If you need to speak, a friend or family member will offer to listen. When dealing with dread, you can even consult with a therapist, who may be able to help you more than anybody else. Often, the fear of losing someone begins in childhood. Most people experience losing a family pet or a distant relative. But others even have to deal with losing parents, grandparents, brothers, and sisters. Some kids are abandoned, others are orphaned. Most humans experience the loss of love at a very young age. This trauma can even develop because parents are abusive or neglectful. Obviously, this scares kids. They don't understand what went wrong and where those loved ones left. Thank you for watching.